Hello everyone, this is Irene from Barcelona. I'm a resident doctor who is doing the specialization in general medicine, but here in Spain we call it family and community doctor. Hello people, nice to see you. My name is Pablo, I work for the European Federation of Public Services Unions and I hope to have a fruitful and good conversation tonight. I belong to, to, to a group called La, Cap, La Cabecera, La Capselera in Barcelona. And I was also uh, was part of the strikes, of the resident strikes, the manifestations in the fall of, of 2020, where we tried to uh, get better conditions, labor conditions, uh, work, and very right for, for this collective, the resident collective. I'm so excited to be here to meet other activist persons and to to share uh, my experience during this time. And I'd like to say to everyone, got technologies, we can use them. Many people were frightened. They think technologies bring big, big brother in our homes to watch us. But through technologies, we also can watch big brother. And uh, we can exercise our power. Tonight, we're going to speak about the situation of our health workers in, in, in Europe uh, with uh, cases. And in my case, uh, the issue of privatization. Hello. Hello, Pablo. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm a resident doctor. Uh, and I'm doing the specialization in general medicine, but here in Spain we call it family and community doctor. Um, so I think that that's a good way to, to call it because I really believe that um, the health is in the community. So it's a, it's a good way. Um, well, I, I'm in Madrid here because I'm... I'm an activist in health, <laughs> maybe in other parts of my life too, but in health also. Uh, I belong to a, a collective called La, La Cabecera. We are looking for a more critical uh, view of the medicine. Um, and we also have like the community uh, in the center of our speech. And in other part, um, I was part of a movement uh, called Marea Mir, uh, who it's it's a group of resident um, resident doctors uh, that started uh, strikes in the fall of September and October of 2020, the last fall, and we we fight for better uh, laboral conditions. I'm a nurse in Bulgaria. Uh, I used to work for 12 years in United Kingdom because working conditions for nurses in Bulgaria are not very good. Um, now I'm back to Bulgaria. I moved in countryside to work for emergency service. Uh, two years ago, me and several Bulgarian nurses started to chat online. Uh, Facebook group, we got organized and we created an organization for the nurses because up to this moment, we didn't have one. And we did organize our own union as well. And we warned the government. Uh, we told them the situation in our healthcare is very poor. So they need to do something. Uh, and uh, when coronavirus started, we actually were, uh, they realized we were completely right. Many Bulgarian nurses, doctors, 
uh, went abroad to work for better payment and better work conditions. We are nurses. We organized each other. Recently, we had several uh, court procedures for uh, nurses being sacked because they participated in the protests. We uh, won the uh, actually, we succeed in the court, and the uh, employers have to bring back the nurses in employment, which is very, very good thing. I work for a European organization that uh, organizes trade unions that represent all the staff, uh, from GPs to cleaning people, and we're very proud of being so generalist because. Um, there has been for many years a vision, um, which I, I am I am sure that you two don't share for what you've explained, but uh, that has kind of a very class, if you like, a very stratified version of like doctors in one side, nurses in another side, and assistant nurses in another side, and and the non-nursing stuff. In in, in uh, so we do have this kind of uh, vision that uh, the health system needs to be, a, needs to be a unit that needs to work in a comprehensive manner. Uh, and for that, the cleaning people, the waste uh, recycle elements that need to be taken into account. And uh, we well monitor what uh, the developments, we, we look at the public health reforms, we see the commercialization of the sector, we see how private interests are creeping in uh, we see how uh, well, how the public sectors are chopped, and um, and the the most profitable, although you shouldn't make profit out of health, but the most profitable ones are given uh, to private investors, to investment funds, and so on, and what is left to the public, so to normal people who do not have money in the, the Cayman Islands, is. Uh, Badly funded uh, emergency uh, ER systems and so on. So more and more, I mean, the staff are saying enough is enough. Uh, the pandemic has basically pushed this to a to a level of of no return. And well, what we do is we try to to learn from the mistakes, to warn about what we identify, and we have a system on early warning and also to put pressure to European institutions so they change the current line, which is still very much towards this uh, public sector reform, uh, marketization, private money going into the public health systems, and so on and so forth. During, during the strike, uh, it was the last uh, like really strong um not intensive because it was like 11 days all the days uh screaming uh sharing you no know, with people because i think that uh one of the problem that we have is like the the sanitary collective in general as pablo was saying we, we are not like really related with us we don't feel like um really close no the nurses the doctors i remember one day that we were doing a performance uh we were doing like um acting like we were in a funeral because like uh the health was dying for us so everyone goes to the city hall uh, here in Barcelona, La Plaza San Jaume, um, we were there like dressing black um, dress, no? They they were taking uh, this coffin. I remember this moment where everyone that was so into them for all this pandemic uh, time, and we put this music in the Plaza San Jaume, la de, so everyone was there like uh screaming and dancing and like celebrating like all that time that we were in our homes or in, in inside us and we were like together like fighting together for the same uh objectives 
to to do better our our um, our work and to feeling much better, no? So, so we were like 11 days there, um, but it wasn't like continuous days because we need to to stop and to do a pause <laughs> to try to negotiate it because the negotiations were like really 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 difficult and. And at the end, we we get a little more more than we had, because one of the things that we wanted is rest uh, 24 uh, hours after we we are working. I mean, when we were in a ward, we work for 21 24 hours. Um, and one of the things is we don't want to continue working after 24 hours working. We mm -hmm. want to rest the day after the work. That's all. So that was like the one of the most difficult things that it's so easy, no? I mean, it's so easy to understand, but for them not, <laughs> because they think that that's good for us working, continue working, it's good for us, but not as good for the patient that I'm going to operate the next day that I wasn't sleeping, right? I mean, uh, it makes sense what I'm, we are saying, but we didn't get uh, all that we wanted, but it started there like a new negotiation for the future. But there was a moment between the first and the second wave um, in which there was a bit of an opening uh, immediately after the summer and so on. And here there's been the mobilizations of the health workers for a while. Uh, um, and, and the introduction of market mechanisms for the management of health are, uh, are very strong. Okay. So I was doing an interview to a midwife and uh, I have a daughter, and I actually was at the time of the uh, birth in the room. And uh, she was explaining me what's happening. She was explaining the new COVID measures during the pandemic for midwives, which is which I couldn't really see how that could happen. I and mean, if there is a thing where there is uh, sweat and blood is giving birth uh, by women, of course. Uh, and uh, with all the protocols that they've put, it, it was just like I could not comprehend. And then she explained, so really it's, it's not a strong moment, but she explained how um, the funding for public hospital works in Belgium. The system works into the situation in which the more women that give birth in that hospital per year, which means per month and per day, uh, the bigger is the portfolio in economic sense, uh, what in France they call the l'enveloppe, uh, uh, to the hospital. So the, the interest of the director of the ward is to give birth to as many women as possible. What is the what what, what ends up happening is like, do you want a cesarea? And it's like, well, I don't even ask because I, I just, this is 12 hours, just go for it. And I, I just could not believe it. I was just like, I don't know, my brain couldn't enter. To me, it seems like the dehumanization of healthcare. A public health system cannot work with such criteria. Sorry, just can't do it. You cannot. Uh, the purpose of a public health system is to cure people, to be preemptive, uh, to be palliative when you cannot be preemptive, but to just, you know, let people go in to get cured and they want to go out as soon as possible. And no one wants to go out before he needs to go out. And no one goes to a hospital for pleasure. And there is one thing I wanted to react to with NHS, particularly this year, which some of us have been mostly, mostly at home uh, 24 hours 7. Uh, the capacity, the therapeutic capacity of social action, of a strike, of a demonstration, of the sense of empowerment, of being all together demanding something different, I think is totally undervalued. What she was explaining is to me is, 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 is a summary of this, of how your kind of daily part of life can change if you see it in another way. And that music with that meme of Boris Johnson saying he likes to shake hands in the hospital, 
two days before going to intensive care was uh, one of the best memes of the whole pandemic. It was just so well done. When people had a problem, first thing that happened, they, they call me and ask me to, to do something. And that was really emotional because they wouldn't dare to do it themselves. So I told them, if you join me, we can do it together. And uh, that was really, really good because uh, in Bulgaria, people are scared. Uh, we got lots of nurses, elderly nurses, they are over 60, many of the nurses. And they're frightened because they can lose their job before to come their retirement time. And suddenly people started to come to me and uh, when I encourage them, they, they just say no. And you can see that happened suddenly. People started to fight for themselves. Very insecure at the beginning, but every single day you can see more and more success in that. And the other thing I uh, realized that our bosses who been oppressing us, like first time I went to meeting, my director of uh, um, that part of uh, emergency services I'm work for, next day he called me and asked me why I've been on a protest. Oh, how I uh, dare, why I dare to go on a protest to complain from him. I tried to explain to him that is not personal, it's nothing to do with him, just system is not very good. And uh, he started to shout at me on the phone. So I closed the phone and I called to the, um, he got institution ombudsman in Bulgaria. And then they called to health minister, health minister called to my director. I realized that he is frightened because I called to him to have troubles. <laughs> and uh, then when my director is not happy, he's more frightened than me because he's got more to lose if he lose his job. And uh, I realized that they have more to lose than me. If I lose my job, I can go to work in another place in Bulgaria, I can go abroad. That's not a problem for me. But if they will lose their job, that's a bit more complicated for them. <laughs> so, and I make more people to realize that people who oppress us, who put us under pressure, they got more to lose than us. So that made people to rise up a little bit more. And every success we got has been uh, bro broadcast and people started to realize they, they, they are strong. They got power to do that. <laughs> okay. You have to be very cautious when, when we do our support groups. Uh, we also been uh, working together with uh, doctors, with uh, doctors assistants, midwives, and we try to keep away political parties. We were talking to people, explaining what we're doing, what is the purpose for, for uh, our uh, actions. And they've been coming to us, people from different organizations, and also um, common people, like they, they got healthcare problem and they've been struggling with the system, share them experience. And that is very good communication. Bulgaria is not a very big country, uh, which is for us is a very good thing because we, we know each other. And uh, when uh, we talk about people, it's very easy to broadcast even without uh, social medias or even without newspapers. If I do something, every, everyone around knows that. <laughs> which make much more easier for us to 
broadcast our events. The fight, the health fight, cross borders and cross European borders and we need to do it um, together to to fight against the the system that is the same uh, wherever you you been i mean in spain in bulgaria or in belgica yeah one of the most powerful thoughts um that i have during the strikes the thing that you learn or um, uh, the things that you experienced during the fight are more important or you no know, the thing that transform yourself during the fight are the really the most important things not the things that you will get in the end of the of the fight I mean, during the process, how do you change yourself? Like learning from other people, changing your acts, your way to be. That's the most powerful thing. So, yeah, I invite you to fight against the system. The fight is long and hard, but it's worth it a lot. <laughs> There's one thing I think is important. It's just... For you, when do something in your site, in your clinic, in your hospital, in your little village, that you're part of a global bigger thing, uh, and 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 unless you are very aware of it, you things that go be like above your head, and both of you were saying it, and I think it's correct, uh, and that's why things like these are important for other people to know that what they do in the little place has impacts everywhere because other people realize that this is possible. Just to tell people that this. It's happening, needs to happen, and it's gonna happen only if we do it, if we do it together. If you if you keep pushing, they can stop you. <laughs> Nothing can stop you. And uh, one people, one person, is uh, powerful with uh, keep keeping pushing. But uh, when it's got support, it's even more powerful thing. And if people because that happened in my country, people don't trust unions, but they have to trust themselves and uh, together do the things. Bye bye. Keep nice well and uh, thank you for your time and, and we'll see each other.